Hello there, this is Rahul and in today's session we are going to see how to set up Prometheus server and Grafana dashboard for monitoring your Kubernetes cluster running on AWS. So here is the quick glimpse of what will be the end result of this session. So you will be able to set up the Grafana as well as the Prometheus server running under Kubernetes cluster. On AWS, you will be setting a Kubernetes cluster uh, with the name test cluster one. And after that, you will also set up the Grafana dashboard. So this is the default Grafana dashboard we will be setting. And also we will be deploying an app application inside our Kubernetes cluster and we will be monitoring the status of uh, that particular application that is going to be a jhook spring boot application inside our grafana dashboard so these are the main objective we will be achieving throughout this session so let's switch over to our desktop and start with our session let's go through the prerequisites which is needed for setting up the grafana and prometheus for our Kubernetes cluster running on aws in this session we are gonna install each packages from the scratch so if you have any of the packages already pre-installed onto your system then it's fine you can skip that particular uh, packages or otherwise if you are also starting from the scratch then you need to have these four packages uh, the first one is AWS CLI second was is EKS CTL for uh, AWS uh, Kubernetes cluster services third thing is Kubernetes CTL uh, that is Kubernetes command line and the fourth one is going to be the helm chart along with the today's session I'm just going to share this guide where I have already documented all the steps which is needed for setting up the Prometheus and Grafana dashboard for our Kubernetes cluster so you can uh, take a note of this link and here you will find all the instructions and the command which we will go through in this session the first package which we are going to install is the AWS CLI but the question comes like why do we need to install the AWS CLI so uh, on the right hand side here you can see this is our AWS environment where we want to set up our Prometheus and uh, Grafana setup along with our Kubernetes cluster but on the other hand uh, this is our local development machine so this local development machine is going to be uh, Ubuntu because I'm using the Ubuntu over here so to communicate uh, with our AWS environment we need AWS CLI there, that is a command line uh, utility provided by AWS. But this AWS CLI will not be able to communicate with our AWS environment. And for that, we need reason, access key, and secret key. So first of all, uh, we are just going to install the AWS CLI. And after that, we are just going to provide the region, access key, and secret key. And once we provide these uh, characteristics to AWS CLI, then it should be able to communicate with our AWS cluster or AWS environment. Now switching to my terminal and on the left hand side you can see this is my terminal and on the right hand side the guide which I have prepared and which I have already shared with you. So here you will find the instructions for installing the AWS CLI. So this is going to be our first step and you need to be careful like what kind of operating system you are using. So if you are using macOS then just follow these instructions for installing the AWS CLI. And if you are using Windows then use these instructions. But uh, since I'm using the Linux uh, or the Ubuntu as my base operating system. So I'm just going to follow these instructions for installing the AWS CLI. So I'm just going to copy this command. And this is simply a, a curl command, which is going to download the zip file onto my local system. And also one thing, uh, if you don't have the unzip uh, utility installed on Ubuntu, this is a specific to Ubuntu, then you need to install that utility. And here you can see the file which I have downloaded. So this is the zip file which I have downloaded that contains our AWS CLI. So simply I'm just going to unzip it. So this is the command for unzipping it. I'm just going to clear the screen. And then finally, I'm just going to run the install. And you can uh, verify the uh, AWS and CLI installation by running the command AWS version. And here you can see we have installed the AWS CLI 2.7.4. After installing the AWS CLI, the next package which we are going to install is the EKS CTL. Uh, this is the uh, utility which will help you to interact with your Kubernetes cluster which is running on to AWS. So here are the instructions and the instructions is again going to be the same. Uh, if you are using for the Mac OS, then use this uh, brew instructions or if you are going it with the Windows, then just use the chocolatey. You need to install the chocolatey if you are using the uh, Windows uh, operating system. But here, uh, this is the command which, uh, which is there for installing on Ubuntu or the Linux operating system. So I'm just going to copy this command, paste it over here, 
and simply hit enter. And after that, I'm just gonna move this uh, to user local bin so that it's uh, available uh, from the command line. I'm just gonna simply paste it. And you can verify it by running the command ekctl version. I think version is the incorrect flag, then it should be, I think it should be version, yeah. So uh, we have installed the EKS CTL version 0.99.0. Moving further into the guide, the next thing which we need to do is we need to set up the AWS credential. So if you go back to our previous slide, then you might have noticed that we need to set up the region access key and the secret key. So till now we have only installed the AWS CLI, but we haven't configured the region access key and secret key. Uh, once we configure these three component uh, with our AWS CLI, then we should be able to communicate with our AWS cloud services. Now the question comes like from where to get those details. So switch to your AWS account. So this is my AWS account. And here, uh, first of all, you need to select the region. So I'm just gonna select the EU central one. So you can make a note of these settings over here. So first of all, EU central one. Uh, this is optional and this is not optional but this is like uh, depends in which region of the world you are so if you are in Asia region then select some some of the uh, data center which is nearest to you since I'm in Europe that's why I'm choosing the EU central one second thing how to get the access key and the secret key so go to access key over here uh, click on new access key and it will click on show access key copy these details uh, these are super confidential, but I'm just gonna delete this after the session. So uh, just remember not to share this detail with anyone. Otherwise, uh, it you might compromise with your AWS account. So copy this details over here. And after that, what you need to do, uh, again, uh, go back to your guide. And here you need to run the command AWS configure. Copy this command over here, go to your terminal and paste it over here, sorry. I'll clear the screen and you need to run the command configure. Remember, we have already installed the AWS CLI. That's why we are able to run the command AWS configure. Now it is asking for the access ID. So I'm just gonna copy from my notepad and I'm just gonna paste it over here, hit enter. Then secret access key, I'm just gonna copy it again from my notepad. I have a notepad open onto my other screen. That's why you can't see it and the reason name so i'm just gonna choose eu central one and hit enter the default output format is optional so you can just simply hit enter and that should be okay i'll clear the screen all right so till now we have installed the aws cli and also we have configured the reason key reason access key and the secret key the next utility which we need to install is the cube ctl that is the kubernetes command line utility and that uh, utility we are again going to install on our local development machine so everything uh, we are doing we are still doing on our local development machine we haven't uh, started any kind of a service on our aws environment so we are just uh, preparing our local development machine so I'm again gonna switch back to my terminal and I'm just gonna open the guide also so these are the instructions for installing the kubectl so you simply need to copy these instructions and uh, execute it so I'm just gonna run the curl command first and hit enter okay after that I'm just gonna run the second command, which is just changing the mode of kubectl. And after that, I'm just gonna move this to user local bin and hit enter. And you should be able to run the command kubectl. Yeah. Okay, yeah. So uh, we have successfully installed the kubectl. The next utility which we are going to install after the kubectl is the Helm chart. Uh, Helm chart is needed because we are going to install the Grafana as well as the Prometheus packages using the Helm chart. I'm just gonna explain it later. Uh, but uh, just to make our local development machine ready, we need to install this utility that is Helm chart. So again, switch back to your terminal and also open the guide. I'll clear the screen over here and uh, just scroll it down and find the instructions for installing the helm chart so these are the instructions for installing the helm chart i'm just going to copy the curl command first oh, sorry 
it just not copied so what i'm gonna do i'm just gonna copy from here and i'm just gonna paste it over here so here i just executed all these three commands so that should also work so first of all we are just going to curl then we are just going to change mode and then we are just going to execute the installation uh, bash script and this should install the helm so you can check it by running the command helm and here you can see it is generating all the uh, like available commands along with the helm so that means our helm has been installed i'm just gonna clear the screen now after installing those packages we need to create a kubernetes cluster and for that we are going to use the utility eks ctl and if you remember we have already installed the eks ctl onto our local development machine now this is the step from where we will be interacting with our AWS services and what does it mean? We will be creating our Kubernetes cluster uh, on AWS using the EKS CTL utility. Then question comes like uh, how we can create a Kubernetes cluster using the EKS CTL utility. So this is the command which I'll explain you but this is the command which you need to run from uh, your terminal because we have already configured AWS CLI, we already configured the credentials which is needed to communicate with AWS and this is the EKS CTL utility which will be creating our Kubernetes cluster. So the command is pretty simple. First of all, I'm just going to use the highlighter over here. Sorry, I need to switch back to previous slide. Yeah. So here, this is the command EKS CTL create cluster. So this is these are the keywords which you need to put in. After that, you need to specify the name of the uh, cluster. So I'm just using the test cluster one. That is going to be my cluster name uh, for my Kubernetes. Third thing which you need is the version. Uh, so you need to specify the Kubernetes version which you will be using. So I'm using here 1.22, but uh, depends like uh, uh, what version is available. You can choose whatever suitable version uh, available at that point of a time. Next thing which you need, you need to specify the reason. Uh, since we are working on a AWS cloud services, so you need to be very specific like in which region you want to this cluster to be available. So here I'm using the EU cluster, EU central one. So this cluster will be created into EU central one region. So here, uh, the next thing which we need to specify is the node group name. So here we will be using the worker nodes. Then after that, we need to specify the node type. So we will be using the T2 large. So our EC2 instances will be of T2 large. How many nodes we will be needing? So we need two nodes. And what's the minimum and the max? So we will be needing at least two nodes and maximum of three. So these are the parameter which you need to provide to EKS CTL so that it can create a Kubernetes cluster uh, onto AWS. Now switching back to terminal and on the guide, you will find the same command over here. So you can simply copy this command and paste it over here. And this command is exactly the same, uh, but here uh, this command is not in so much readable format that's why i have already explained to you and here only one thing you need to change uh, here i have used the version 1.8 uh, so i think uh, I, I need to update this guide because 1.8 version will not work uh, at least the minimum supported version is uh, 1.9 and I will go with uh, 22, which is I felt is quite latest. So I'm just going to use that one. I'll update this guide uh, after this session. So simply going to hit enter and it might take around 10 to 15 minutes or maybe more. So be patient with it. Uh, it will finish uh, creating your cluster and uh, you should see your we will see the AWS cluster by logging into our AWS console. So I'll be back once my cluster is ready. So here you can see my EKS Kubernetes cluster is up and running. So uh, this is my AWS console and I'll just uh, type EKS over here just to check my cluster is there or not. So I'm just going to click on Elastic Kubernetes Service. And here you can see this is the test cluster which uh, we just started using the EKS CTL utility. So I can see my cluster is there and it is active right now. 
Uh, while installing the or while setting up my Kubernetes cluster, there was an issue which is reported onto my console and here you can see parsing kubectl version string. And we need to fix this issue and for that we need to run the command uh, by that will update the Kubernetes config. So the command is AWS EKS update kube config and the name of the cluster and this should fix this issue. Uh, I noticed this issue uh, while my setup it might be possible that you might not get this issue but in case if you re, uh, if you see this kind of an issue onto your console then I would recommend running this command. Uh, I'll update my blog post with this uh, fix also so that it is handy and uh, if any one of you are facing similar issue then you can simply run this command. So I'm just going to paste the command and hit enter. Okay, that's been done. So just a quick recap, we have installed the AWS CLI along with the region access key and secret key. After that, we have installed the kubectl utility to interact with our Kubernetes cluster. And also we have installed the Helm chart. And after that, we have used the EKS CTL to create our Kubernetes cluster. And this is the command which we have used it for. The next thing which we need is we need to install the matrix server. So what does it mean by matrix server? So here you can see this is our Kubernetes cluster running onto AWS, but uh, it cannot provide any data to Prometheus and Grafana by itself because there is no inbuilt functionality which can push this kind of a performance data to Prometheus and Grafana. So we need to find that utility which can communicate with our Kubernetes cluster and transfer those data to Prometheus and Grafana so that those performance data can be visualized onto our uh, Grafana dashboard. So what is that utility? So that utility is called as matrix server that is called as Kubernetes matrix server. And this is the command which we need to run to uh, install that utility inside our Kubernetes cluster. So this is the command which we are going to use and the same command I have uh, mentioned in the guide also. So here you can see uh, install Kubernetes matrix server. So this is the command which you need to uh, run onto your local development machine because we have already installed kubectl onto our local development machine. And this kubectl command is going to communicate with our Kubernetes cluster which we have recently created. And that is our test cluster one. Uh, if you remember this cluster. So this is the cluster which is running there and now we need to run the kubectl command that is Kubernetes uh, command line utility that will uh, install this matrix server onto our Kubernetes cluster. I'm just gonna copy this command from here and I'm just gonna paste it over here and simply hit enter. And that's been done. You can also verify the Kubernetes matrix server installation by running the command, uh, this kubectl get deployment matrix server. Just copy this command and paste it over here and hit enter. And here you can see the matrix server is ready, one slash one, that means uh, it's up and running. And there are a few errors you can see over here, but you can ignore these error uh, because here there was only one instance of matrix server and that is up and running. So we just only need that matrix server, uh, which should be up and running. All right, the next thing which we need to do, we need to use the Helm utility and this Helm utility is going to install the Prometheus onto our Kubernetes cluster. So for that, we are just going to run the command helm install Prometheus. But before that, we need to add the Prometheus repository into our helm repository. Uh, I'll show you what I mean. So switch back to your terminal and I'll also open the guide over here. So first of all, this is the command for adding the uh, Prometheus, repo Prometheus helm repository into our helm chart repository. So I'm just gonna copy this command uh, oh, I'll, I have already executed this command. So here you can see Helm repo add Prometheus community. So this command is going to add the Prometheus community repository into our local Helm repository. After that, you can run the Helm repo update command. So I'm just going to copy and paste it over here. So this is going to update the repository definition. So here it has updated successfully. After that, we are going to create a namespace and that namespace we are going to put as Prometheus namespace. So this is going to be our Kubernetes namespace. I'm just gonna hit enter. I'm just gonna clear the screen and just paste the command. So this is the command for creating the namespace with the name Prometheus. So the namespace has been created. After that, we are just going to uh, install the Prometheus. Remember, we have added the Prometheus repository into our Helm chart. 
After that, we have updated the repository definition by running the Helm repo update command. And after that, we have created a Prometheus namespace and then we are going to install the Prometheus. So these are the steps which is, which you need to execute to install the Prometheus onto your local development machine. Oh, sorry, onto your Kubernetes cluster, which is running onto AWS. So I'm just going to copy this and paste it over here and hit enter. And that's been done. But we need to verify the status of our Prometheus uh, after installing it. I'm just gonna clear the screen before we verify the status of our Prometheus installation. To verify the Prometheus installation, we are going to check all the resources which is running under the namespace Prometheus. And for that, we are just gonna run the command kubectl get all and for namespace and the namespace is Prometheus because we have done the installation of a Prometheus under the namespace Prometheus. So the uh, resources which we are going to verify is the pod, services, uh, daemon set, deployment and the replica set. So I'm just going to hit enter. And this should uh, put all the stats of our Kubernetes cluster and the namespace Prometheus uh, onto our terminal. So I'm just gonna increase the size of my name uh, terminal. So here, this is the command which we have executed and here you can see the status. So the, all the status are running and all the instances two slash two, one slash one. So everything is up and running here in the pod. Similarly, we are gonna verify the services. So Everything seems to be fine. The daemon set is also ready and the deployments are also uh, available and up to date. And similarly, the replica set also those are up and running. So that means we have successfully installed our Prometheus using the Helm chart onto our Kubernetes cluster. There is a one more utility uh, to verify our Prometheus server by accessing the UI of our Prometheus server. But since uh, uh, this is the whole setup which I'm doing over here. I'm doing on a, my Vagrant machine. So I am running a virtual machine inside my Ubuntu machine. So in this terminal or this machine, which is uh, over here, uh, here I cannot, uh, here I do not have a, a browser installed inside that machine. It's a very virtual machine, very basic virtual machine uh, where I can only access the uh, terminal. So that's why I cannot access the UI, but we can uh, run this utility and we can use the curl command to verify this endpoint. So I'm just gonna run the port forwarding, first of all. So it is just simply forwarding the port uh, of my Prometheus server, which is running onto AWS environment onto my local host on my local machine. So this is just doing the port forwarding. So here I have done the port forwarding and I can access the same port onto my local host. So I'm just gonna switch to my another terminal and I'm just gonna run the command curl localhost 9090 slash graph. And you can see the same thing in this, uh, this uh, uh, screenshot in my guide and simply hit enter. And here you can see this is the output which I'm getting. So it is just generating the HTML output, but that means uh, you have successfully installed the Prometheus uh, server onto your Kubernetes cluster. So if you turn off this port forwarding and go back to the terminal, and if you rerun this, then it should not work. So it's not working. So that means we have installed the Prometheus server and uh, we should now next uh, move to the next step that is install Grafana. And again, uh, to install the Grafana, we are going to use the Helm utility. And this is the command which we are going to use Helm install Grafana and followed by these parameters. And here we will be setting the initial password that is EKS uh, exclamation and then awesome. So this is going to be the default password for our Grafana dashboard, which we will be seeing later once uh, everything is ready. Uh, so let's switch over to our terminal and also open the guide. Uh, so here the installation is again going to be the same. First of all, we need to add the repository that is Grafana repository into our local Helm repository. So this is the command. So our Grafana repository has been added. We need to update the repository definition by running the command Helm repo update. That's been done. And then we are just going to uh, install the Grafana. But before that, we need to create one data source because uh, Prometheus and Grafana both are different. And to communicate with uh, uh, Prometheus, we need to create a data source. So this is the data source which we are going to create. So simply create a YML file over here. Just copy this name of the file 
you can create uh, any name of the of your choice but since i'm just using uh, a relevant name that's why i have put it as a prometheus data source because grafana needs a data source uh, from from prometheus so this is the yml file which i'm going to create uh, simply hit enter and here you can put this definition over here so this is the data source definition so since grafana is just a visualization uh, thing it just creates a dashboard but it needs a data uh, and that data is provided by a prometheus so we need to create a data source definition between grafana and prometheus so that's why we are just going to create this data source yml and after that you can just simply save and quit and our prometheus data source has been configuration has been created in the form of yml the next thing which we need to do is we need to create a namespace uh, if you remember we have previously created a namespace for prometheus that is this one and we have done all the installation under for prometheus under that namespace but here in grafana we are just going to create a one more namespace with the name grafana and we are going to do all the installation related to grafana under this namespace so i'm just going to copy this command and just going to clear the screen and paste it over here and hit enter so this is going to create our grafana namespace that is kubernetes namespace i'm talking about and here these are the command for installing the grafana and here you can see this is the data source yml which we have created and this will be responsible for communicating and fetching the data from our prometheus server and showing it on our grafana so just copy this command and uh, i'll put some spaces over here and paste it over here and simply hit enter and i'll be back once this installation is done so here you can see our uh, grafana installation has also been done i'll just clear the screen over here let's verify the grafana installation by running the command kubectl get and then the namespace and the namespace is going to be the grafana so kubectl get all and followed by the namespace and remember uh, we have run the same command for the prometheus inside our prometheus namespace so i'm just going to run for grafana And here you can see uh, there is one pod uh, which is running and the status is also running and the deployment is also ready and that is also available and the replica set is also one and that is also running so our grafana installation has successful and that uh, our grafana pod service deployment and replica set all are running now the question comes like how to access the grafana dashboard so for that uh, if you remember that we have run the command kubectl get all so it should uh, show all the statistics of our grafana and here you can see this is the services statistics which, which you can see i'll just extend it a bit more over here so that you can see a bit more clear so here uh, this is the service and uh, this service is running on a load balancer and that is accessible on this external ip so this is the external ip on which you can access your grafana dashboard so this external ip will be accessible from anywhere and if you are able to access your grafana dashboard that means you have successfully installed prometheus kubernetes cluster as well as grafana onto aws i'm just going to copy this uh, external ip and go back to my browser and paste it over here and you can hit the enter so here you can see our grafana dashboard is loading and uh, this external ip you can share it with anyone uh, and that should be accessible and here you can enter your default username and password if you have come this far that means you have successfully set up your kubernetes cluster which is running on aws and also you have successfully set up the prometheus along with the grafana and all these three components are working fine and uh, your grafana dashboard is ready so now what we are going to do we are just going to enter the default username and password and then we are just going to see uh, some dashboards so the default uh, username should be admin and the password should be from our if you remember we have created prometheus uh, a data source yml and inside that we have set up a password that is eks awesome so i'm just going to copy that i hope it is going to be the same password i'm just going to switch to my dashboard and uh, paste it over here and click on login
And yeah, that is the default password which we have set inside our YML and you need to use the same password. And then if you are using it for production purposes, then please change this password and keep something else. So this is the uh, login of my Grafana dashboard and this is the default view of my dashboard. Now the next question comes like after setting up your username and password, uh, how to import or how to create a dashboard. So one thing which I like is I can reuse uh, one of the dashboard which is created by someone else. And for that what you need to do is you need to click on this link on the Grafana open source community where someone has created similar dashboards uh, for Kubernetes. And if you found that dashboard useful then you can simply use that dashboard using that number. So here I liked one of the dashboard which is which has a number 6417. I, I'm just going to show you. So I will increase the size of my window over here. So here you can see there are lots of dashboard available over here. So that's let's take an example Nginx ingress controller. But here you will find a unique number associated with that particular dashboard that is 9614. So if you like this dashboard, you can simply copy this number and you can come to your Grafana dashboard and click on uh, this import option uh, here. And then you can simply enter that number and you can uh, simply download that particular dashboard. But since I'm interested uh, into one dashboard which I liked for my uh, this session and uh, the dashboard name is uh, Kubernetes cluster Prometheus. I'm just going to hit the enter. So I'm just going to click on this. And here you can find the 6417. So this is the number of uh, assigned to my particular dashboard. So I'm just going to copy this number, go to here. Uh, I just went to this plus sign and here there is an import sign. So just go here, paste that one, click on load. And then uh, your uh, you should be able to load your uh, dashboard over here. But here you need to select uh, data source. And here I'm just going to use the default data source that is going to be the Prometheus. And then you simply click import. And here you can see this is our dashboard uh, for our Kubernetes cluster. And here you can see all the statistics like Prometheus server, which we which is we have installed, which is up and running. And here we have some other statistics like alert manager, stat matrix, and the matrix server, Grafana core DNS. So this is the default dashboard, which I like, which I have simply imported uh, with the number. So you don't need to recreate this kind of a dashboard uh, by your own. So you can simply search for some suitable dashboard from here, copy the number and put it over here and you should be uh, good to go with it. So these are the instructions which I have already mentioned in the guide. So how to uh, search for the Grafana dashboard number and how to import that particular dashboard. So I hope you should be able to import a suitable dashboard which you find useful for your use case. So this is the way you should do it. The next and the last thing which I want to try out is I just want to deploy something inside my Kubernetes cluster and I just wanted to monitor that particular service onto my uh, Grafana dashboard over here. So here something something has to show up over here once I deploy inside my Kubernetes cluster. So for that, what I'm going to do, I'm just going to uh, deploy one Spring Boot application inside my Kubernetes cluster. So this is the manifest. You can copy it from here. So this is a simple uh, YML uh, for creating a Kubernetes deployment and also running as a service. So uh, I'll just copy this whole thing and uh, go back to my terminal. I'll clear it. I'll just Okay, I'll just create uh, the file over here. I'm just going to name the same. We paste it over here. And after that, I'm just going to simply copy the whole YML definition over here and uh, save and quit. I can show you once again also. So it should be with the name, okay, K at as a Spring Boot deployment. So here I'm just creating a service, Kubernetes service, which is running on a node port on a port 8080. And this is the deployment. And this is the Spring Boot uh, Docker container image, which I'm fetching. And it is going to deploy on a port 8080. 
so uh, I'll clear the screen and you can verify this is the YML which I have created and, and I'm just gonna execute or apply this YML onto my Kubernetes cluster using the kubectl utility so the command for that is if you go back to my guide which should be here so this is the command which you need to run and the command is kubectl apply dash f after that the name of our yml and simply hit enter i'll clear the screen over here now let's verify the status of our deployment uh, of our spring boot application so i can run the command kubectl get deployment and the name of my deployment that is jhook spring boot i'm just going to simply hit enter And here you can see uh, there are two replica set and both are up and running uh, so my deployment of my spring boot application inside my kubernetes cluster is successful and after refreshing this uh, grafana dashboard over here and i should be able to see that spring boot application so here you can see uh, the spring boot application uh, which i have deployed inside my kubernetes cluster and it can see the value there are two replica set of my deployment so that means uh, we are able to set up our prometheus and grafana dashboard we are able to deploy our application and as well as we are able to see uh, the states uh, of our or the status of my deployment uh, inside my grafana dashboard so that is going to be the last step and uh, i just wanted to take the complete use case uh, so that you can create uh, prometheus and grafana dashboard for kubernetes and also you can deploy something inside your kubernetes cluster and monitor using the prometheus as well as grafana dashboard so that is all about how to set up your prometheus server and grafana dashboard for monitoring your kubernetes cluster so if you are interested into the similar content on devops then considering subscribing to this channel and if you have any question related to the today's session then those are most welcome and you can put down into the comments section so see you into the next session of our devops till then take care and bye bye